Good morning. I just want to take in all your all's faces. Wow. I'm so glad that you're here. Welcome back. It's rally day. Um, next week, Sunday school starts, so it'll be even more exciting. But we have lots of things going on. You are all welcome here. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we're glad that you're here. And welcome to those who are worshiping with us online. Here, what happened? I lost my feed here. Huh? It was one second. We have tech gremlins here since yesterday, so um, if anything happens, Guy's laughing, he knows. Um, we're just going to go with it and everyone say a quick prayer. But I do want to say if you have anything that you'd like to be prayed for, a joy or a concern, please put those in the comments on our online feed and we will get to that as well. Just a reminder, I think the pew pads are back in, the friendship pads. At, I'll announce it again, but at some point, if you feel comfortable, sign those and pass them along. But let's begin with our this morning. Tell me the stories of Jesus, number 277. Let's stand and sing. seated. Oh, I'm sorry. It's up and down exercise this morning. <laughs> uh, it's so good to see everybody here this morning. I can't tell you this is prayers answered and um, thank you so much for being here. Anyway, please join me responsively in the call to worship. We have gathered in this place to worship because Jesus invites us to come. We come as we are, with our faith and our doubts, with our successes and our failures. Because Jesus invites us to come. We come with what we have, bringing with us the events and stories of the past week. Because Jesus invites us to come. Let us pray the opening prayer together. You have brought us, O oh God, to another Lord's Day, when we are privileged to worship you with our brothers and sisters in Christ. May we have unity of mind and heart as we open ourselves to the movement of your Holy Spirit. As your love grows within us, may we have rich fellowship with you and with one another. In Christ's name, amen. I would like to invite the children to come forward with their backpacks. Today we have our backpack blessing. 
Come on up. Good morning. Oh my, I think it's, it's a little bit of a, <laughs> we need to leverage by leaning forward. Wow. This is awesome. Everybody's already back to school, right? And it's going well? Good, good. Today we have before us the backpacks that are carried to and from school. They take, sometimes they take treasures to school to share, and they bring homework home, right? And important information for mom and dad. Homework is bad. Hmm. <laughs> homework is bad. Sometimes there's so much stuff in those backpacks that they're hard to carry, right? And sometimes they're light. But we want to bless them for you today. And I'm going to bless the tags, and then we're going to pass them out. And they say, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and love your neighbor as yourself. So let's pray. Gracious God, we lift to you today these students. They are ready to receive your blessings as they commit themselves to studying and learning in the school year ahead. We ask that you bless these backpacks. They will hold schoolwork. They will be carried to school and home and back again. And as these students carry these backpacks, may they re be reminded of the love and care of this congregation that surrounds them each and every day. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who we seek to follow every day. Amen. Amen. All right. Everybody gets a, gets a tag. You can put it on your backpack. You want to just pass the basket around and everybody take one? And then, good morning, Aiden. Come on up. We've got tags for your backpack. While the children are sitting here, I would like anyone who is going to help with Sunday school this year in any way, shape, or form to please stand. Is that it? Oh, there's one. There's one. We've got some. And so today we're going to recognize these friends who have responded to the call of God to become workers in our church school, to teach, to administer the work of teaching, and to support the work of teaching and the ministries of Christ among us. God, we have entrusted these with your message, the message to our children of your power and grace and love. May they serve you in nurturing the spiritual growth of all who are entrusted to them. Bless each one gathered before us, enabling them to be channels of your grace. We pray in this name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let's give them our support. All right. Did everybody get a tag? All right. You can go back to your seats. Oh, I think Mommy can help you do that. You got it? Can you put my back on? Here. Come on. I got it. There you go. <laughs> and now we have one more special thing that we do, and that is that we give Bibles to our third graders and our eighth graders. And so when I was thinking about this this morning, I dug out my Bibles. This is my third grade Bible. I think it's probably, oh, it might be King James Version. And this is my eighth grade Bible. I still use it. But I want to show the kids that, that these become lifelong companions. And so I invite our third graders to come up first. Caleb Odenwald, is he here? Declan Doomer is not here today, we'll save his. Aiden Pizzino and Claire Mooney. Come on up, we got a line up up here. There you go, Caleb. We're gonna pray over them, so I want you to just hang on. Turn around, nope, Claire, Claire, back up. <laughs> Turn around, turn around so mommy can get a picture of you getting your Bibles. Yay! And then I just want you to step over there and stand in front of that welcome sign, okay? 
Just go stand over there for a second. We're going to get everybody up here and pray. Caleb Olson, Owen Linehan, now Cora Wilson. Nope. We didn't want Caleb to stand by himself, so we are going to bring him up here. There you go. <laughs> over here. Let us pray. Receive the word of God. Learn its stories and study its words. Its stories belong to us all, and these words speak to us all. They tell us who we are, and they tell us that we belong to one another, for we are the people of God. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, congratulations. Enjoy your Bibles. Yes, we can give them. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 22 through 34. Paul stood up in the middle of the council on Mars Hill, and he said, People of Athens, I see you are very religious in every way. As I was walking through town and carefully observing your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. What you worship as unknown, I now proclaim to you. God, who made the world and everything in it, is Lord of heaven and earth. He doesn't live in temples made with human hands, nor is God served by human hands, as though he needed something, since he is the one who gives life, breath, and everything else. From one person, God created every human nation to live on the whole earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their lands. God made the nations so they would seek him, perhaps even reach out to him and find him. In fact, God isn't far away from any of us. In God, we live, move, and exist. As some of your own poets said, we are his offspring. Therefore, as God's offspring, we have no need to imagine that the divine being is like a gold, silver, or stone image made by human skill and thought. God overlooked ignorance of these things in times past but now directs everyone, everywhere, to change their hearts and lives. This is because God set a day when he intends to judge the world justly by a man he has appointed. God has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection from the dead, some began to ridicule Paul. However, others said, We'll hear from you about this again. At that, Paul left the council. Some people joined him and came to believe, including Dionysius, a member of the council on Mars Hill, a woman named Damaris, and several others. Thank you, Kathy. So we're still in the month of worship. Those balloons are just not working, are they? I can't see everybody. There. Now I can. This month during worship, we're talking about stories. The stories of God's people in the Bible, our stories of Christians, and as our story as a faith community, and our personal stories. So last week, we started with Genesis and the story of Abram and Sarai who became Abraham and Sarah. They answered God's call to leave their country and lead the people into the promised land. Abraham would become, as God promised, the father of many nations and of many descendants, of whom we claim to be a part. Genesis also tells the story of how God chose the Israelites to be the model of God's people so that others would want to know and be in relationship with him. 
I talked a little bit last week about the Bible and about how it is a story. It is our story and the story of God and God's relationship to all of creation. It's a love story, but it's not without struggle. But always the story of a God who is, if nothing, persistent to be in relationship with all of creation. So in our scripture reading today from Acts, we hear another story. We hear the story of Paul at Mars Hill, proclaiming to those listening that he had indeed been on a tour of their city. He had seen what they had built for monuments, and he saw one that said, to an unknown God. Now to put this story in a context, Paul wasn't exactly talking to a church congregation like I am here. Not everyone there even knew of this God. Most of them were what we would call pagans who didn't believe in God. It's a story of Paul missionizing. I don't know if I made that word up or not. But in pure Paul fashion, in verses 30 and 31, Paul hits his listeners right between the eyes, or more insultingly, between the ears, when calling them ignorant human beings. Until now, God, out of divine generosity, has overlooked their ignorance, but the time is coming for repentance. And repentance wasn't a term that Greek philosophers used a lot. But Paul was keenly aware that within their culture, there was this sense of insecurity. They were afraid. And their altars to this unknown God hinted at their attempt of, at loyalty, but also at fearfulness that some unknown, unappeased God might decide to make trouble for them someday. And Paul's words reject the possibility of some unanticipated anger from an unknown God. Instead, Paul teaches the people about the God, our God, capital G, that we worship, who has let us know in no uncertain terms that someday, someday we will face a judgment. Now, it's not something that we talk about in church like this very often, but nevertheless, we will face God one day, and Paul is making it clear to those that are there that they might want to change their ways. Of course, Paul is not received well, so I thought about this, and I thought, well, what if I walked out in front of the stadium at Lambeau Field right before a Packer game, and I told everyone that I was going to preach about Jesus before kickoff? <laughs> Pretty sure it wouldn't be received very well, not saying that everyone who goes to a Packer game is pagan, please hear that, but they weren't in the space to be listening for a sermon and neither were these people in the town square. But that doesn't mean they don't need to hear it, does it? Because it is the greatest story ever told. Paul tells them and us that God made the nations so that everyone would seek God. And in fact, God is not very far away from any of us. In God we live and move and have our being. And Jesus Christ is God's son, God's gift of salvation to each of us, God coming to live among us. What an amazing story. Now, this is, of course, the heart of our faith. It is the reason that we come here on Sunday to sing songs, to be with each other. And I bet if I asked each of you, what's your story? Why are you here? There would be as many different answers to that as there are hymnals in this church. Some of us are here because we know that God called us to work in the church. Some of us are here because someone made us come. A parent, a grandparent, or a spouse. Some of us like the music. Some of us like to be in the sanctuary every week in order to feel like they are close to God, or close to their friends, or their family. And we each have a unique story. And we each have God-given gifts, whether we have discovered them yet or not, or whether we are ignoring them. The ancient story that we listen to and sing about and pray about at least once every week is still being written. It's not a static story. It didn't stop when the Bible was finished. It doesn't say the end. 
It's the beginning. And we participate in this story. Just keep hitting it. And we actually bid the kingdom of God to come near us every week. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Please, thy kingdom come. In its ministry that we all do together. And finding a way to be a part of it is important for the story to continue. So if you have a chance today or next Sunday, I bid you to go out into the, north, into the hearth room and find a way, find something, any way that you can share your gifts. And if what you feel called to do isn't on one of those tables, come and talk to me. Because we need each other, all of us. Reading scripture and living a Christ-centered life is tricky enough. If you think that you can do it by yourself, it's even harder. And when we participate in the story of God and of God at work in the world, we are doing it as part of the body of Christ. And although we each have our own story, it's like a patchwork quilt, it's this larger narrative that we are a part of that will bring about God's kingdom here on earth. It's our stories all put together that are the foundation of our church, of First United Methodist in Hartford. And it's really space for each of these stories because we are not alike, but we are each unique and loved. And it's got to be the batteries. Beloved by God, regardless of what our life looks like on the outside. It's like that Oprah thing, the car giveaway. You are beloved, and you are beloved, and you are beloved, regardless of what you have done or said or what your life looks like. So I want you to pause for just a second, and I want you to think about your story. What brought you here today? Habit? I don't know about that, because this is a new habit again. It's been a while. How about tradition? This is what we do on Sunday. How about brokenness? I need to be near people. How about grief or joy? Let's just pause for a second and think about our stories. And yes, it can be more than one. You can hold all of those story, those reasons to be here together. Grief and joy can go together. And then I want you to stop for just a second and think about someone near you. Find someone near you, whether you know them or not, and just think about them for a second. How are you connected? Maybe you're not. Doesn't matter. In this very moment, we are all connected. We are all a part of something bigger. And each of you are practicing your faith being here today. So I want you at some point today to remember the person that you thought of and say a prayer for them. You don't have to say anything. Just say, you know that person that was sitting next to me with the striped shirt? God, you know what they need. Lift them up to God. So what is your story? What's our story? They're all connected. This whole Jesus as God coming to live with us, teaching and preaching and ministering and healing and dying was for all of us. Because you see, the biggest misconception that we have about the greatest story ever told, the one that we read at Christmas and at Easter and celebrate about Jesus, who was born thousands of years ago and then lived and died thousands of years ago, the biggest misconception that we have is that Jesus stayed dead. He didn't. We believe that Jesus is alive. We believe that Jesus is a part of each of us as we sit here. As we live with Jesus in us, the letters of the story are still being written in our lives. It's all of us. And then when we tell that story to others, together, it becomes amazing. So may your story become amazing this week. Amen.
songs based on Jesus this morning. And so we're going to sing one I'm not sure you're familiar with, but it's number 2062 in The Faith We Sing, The Lily of the Valley. Let's stand and sing. Announcements are in your bulletin. We've gone back to the larger bulletin that like those. Um, the ministry fair is in the hearth room. Coffee hour needs some sponsors. I think we have the next this week and next week covered. Um, we're doing it a little bit simpler to get started, so don't feel overwhelmed, but there is a sign-up list for that. Choirs begin. Men's choir starts this morning. Goodness, the, the announcements go all the way to the second page. There's a lot going on. I thought it said need a va vacation, not need a vaccine. I was like, yeah, sign me up. Our Sunday school teachers were blessed this morning. Next week we start. Um, we are looking for clean tin cans. And that's for next Sunday already. We're going to start something on the third Sunday of the month where we collect loose change. So everybody remember to bring your loose change. We'll send the kids around with the tin cans. It's called a noisy can offering. So if noise bothers you, bring earplugs. But we're looking for some tin cans. And then next Saturday is a very important day here in the church. We will be packing rice meals for the Midwest uh, Mission Center. They are in dire need. And there are lots of ways that our mission team is... Um, collecting things as well. You'll see them all around in the lobby. Don't feel like you have to give to everything. Just know that there are lots of opportunities. Mark is going to be, Mark, raise your hand. That's my husband. He's in the back in the Hawaiian shirt. You'll see him around. He is going to be around with his computer with Sign Up Genius on it. So if you want to sign up to help next Saturday and you haven't yet, he can sign you up right away this morning. We have three hours. We have four lines going for three hours. That's like 120 people. 
and we will be packing meals, and the Midwest Mission Center brings everything for us. So if you can help, I know we have a few spots open, like a lot. Also, there are notebooks and folders needed for the Milwaukee Rescue Mission that is out in the, in the lobby. The Peru Mission is looking for some things as well for Anthony to take with them. Um, and also, the, um, the conference has decided to run another in-gathering like we do every spring. This one is for the refugees from Afghanistan. It is clothing and it is also flood buckets to replenish, or cleaning buckets, they're called now, because they're used for other things. But they are completely out, based on all of the weather. So those lists are available in the hearth room near the mission table. I think that's it. Did I miss anything? Oh yes, the toys. And we cleaned out little lambs. Little Lambs doesn't, isn't here anymore, so we decided to clean out the Little Lambs room this last week, thanks to those who did that. All of the stuff from Little Lambs is in the back of Fellowship Hall. If you need some toys or books in your life, now children, I should say this, make sure your parents know what you're taking. Because y'all might go, you don't really want. But there's a donation basket back there. If you feel it's worth something and you want to, otherwise just take it. All of that needs to get cleaned up. All right, ways that we can be praying for one another and sharing our joys. I know that it was Miss Linda's birthday yesterday, so I wanted to make sure to mention that. Any other joys or prayers? Does anybody have anything this morning? Don. <laughs> Don and Twyla Gartsky, our roof neighbors that we live next to, they're celebrating 62 years, so we pray, with, we pray with them and bless them in their marriage. I have a lot of prayer requests. Our list is long. Um, and for the purposes of Facebook, I've started just listing first names, unless I know that I have permission to use their full name. Um, I'm going to list mine and then I have a couple others. First of all, we, we do pray for the family of Clay Oosterheis, who passed away earlier this week. For Barb and everyone in that family, we send our prayers and our condolences. I know that there is no service, so there's no information on that. We pray for Angie Roby and Scott Roby, Helen Roby's children, who are dealing with health issues. We pray for Danny Dahl, and we pray for the family of Stephen Philippi, who is the father of one of um, Victoria and Jay's technicians at the vet clinic. He did pass away this week. Continued prayers for Mark and for Megan. We pray for Ruth Noel. We pray for uh, Emily's dad, Mark. We pray for Kathy, who is still dealing with some tests that need to be done. Um, Victoria sent me a message that Dale, her dad, is doing well, so we can take him off our prayers, and they thank you for all the prayers. We continue to pray for Jessica and for Corinne and for Sue. We pray for Kathy. We pray for Doris Lapine, whom I saw this week and is in good spirits. And we pray for Sharon Cowan, who had some surgery. Also, Mary Lou Gaziano is one of our uh, faithful online worshipers, and her sister Rosemary passed away this week, and so we lift her and her family up in our prayers, and also we pray for Nedra's mom, Kay. Anybody else? I see a hand way in the back. Aiden, what you got? A joy. Yes, your baby brother is here. Christian is over in the corner. I've been eyeing that, so <laughs> we have a new baby. Christian Pizzino is here. Yes. Annette, okay. Angelo's aunt Annette has been diagnosed with cancer again, and so 
we will hold her in our prayers as well. Anybody else? We do also, I know that I put it on Facebook, but we do also hold all those in prayer who are remembering 9-11, 20 years on. And we continue to pray for all those who are dealing with um, the remnants of Ida and other storms that are coming through, as well as um, those here in town. Uh, we lost our Culver's yesterday, which for some of us is really depressing. Um, but also for the, the owners and those who work there, we hold all of them in our prayers. Thank you. My list is somewhere else. Yes, we pray for all those who did not get out of Afghanistan who wanted to, and for those that are left behind that are trying to find safety and a way out, and prayers for all of those who are coming and are already here. We have a large contingent in uh, Fort McCoy, and so we pray for them. Anything else? Let's pray. God, like the Israelites in the wilderness, we too have known your love and experienced your care and provision, and you invite us to extend that love to the world around us, to care for others as deeply as we care for ourselves. And so we bring the needs of your world before you now. You know all that there is to know. We pray for the many who do not have enough, enough food to eat or shelter to keep warm, enough employment or money to pay their bills, enough medicine or medical care. We pray also for those who have more than enough but who still struggle to find meaning and purpose in life. God, your grace reaches out to all of us. You call us to live as citizens of heaven working together with one heart and mind and strengthen us to live in a manner worthy of the good news and the amazing story that we have received. God, there are so many in our, in our midst right here in our congregation and those connected to them that need our prayers for those struggling with cancer and other health issues, for those who are grieving loss, for those who are dealing with surgeries and recoveries, for those who are dealing with tests, for those who are dealing with difficult relationships in their families, Lord, we lift all of them up to you. We know that we are connected. We know that we are one body of Christ. We ask that you help us to be that for the world. And we pray all this through the ancient words that Jesus taught us to say when we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I want to share with you a joy that I have, and that is hearing the children say the Lord's Prayer with us. And we are indeed grateful for all that God gives to us, and so we do take up an offering every Sunday. Now, I know that some of you give online, and I want to let you know that our online giving, our new online giving is up and running, and in the words of Jean Conrad, three clicks and you're done, right? So it's very easy to use. I will be around afterwards with my laptop if anyone else wants to see how it works. But even, even if you give online, what you bring here today is a recommitment to this amazing story. So let us take our morning offering.
us pray. God, we have brought before you a portion of all that you give to us. But most of all, our offering each Sunday symbolizes a recommitment to the story that you have given to us, that we can be together connected, and that we can be for the world an example of what your love can do. We ask that you bless these gifts that we have brought before you. Help them to be for us all that we need to do your work in this world and to bid your kingdom come right here in Hartford. We ask all this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our closing song today was a request from Ruth Noel. Let us sing together Because He Lives, number 364. practice starts on Wednesday night at 7.30. Bells are at 6.30. So 
just want to make a mention of that because I heard some beautiful voices harmonizing. But it's because Jesus lives that we have this amazing story to tell. It's the greatest story ever told, and we tell it with our lives. So go from this place knowing that your life is a book that other people read, especially if they want to know Jesus. So go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.